All right, welcome back. It's uh, the end of August. We're going to be talking about our September 2025 production updates. Before we get started, if you want to read the full blog, check out all the pictures and whatnot and the videos, make sure to go to our blog. All right, let's get started. First off, we have the alt mill 2x2 and 4x4. Uh, we're excited to let people know that we've dramatically dropped our lead time. We started off, I think, around 14 weeks lead time. Now we're at five to seven. So still still a lead time, but much, much less than before. Once we had gotten all the materials in this past month, or I think last month, uh, we were shipping at like almost 100 units per week. Uh, right now, we've taken a pause on the shipping because we are out of power supplies. They're supposed to come in by the end of this week. And so we'll be resuming our typical production rate and we are gonna keep our five to seven week lead time. And then it'll take us probably a couple of weeks to get down to, to clear the rest of the queue at which point the lead time should be like, maybe like two weeks. Obviously this, uh, this depends on if there's any other delays or uh, depends on the demand, uh, but we're pretty optimistic that we'll be able to kind of clear the queue by October. We are at the end of batch five for alt mills, which means that for batch six, uh, we, already, we have that in production, but parts for that are gonna arrive around the end of October, I think. So we might have a bit of a gap between when we finish batch five and batch six. So lead times might be a little bit up and down at that time, but I don't think it should be more than like a month or so. We have been shipping quite fast. Uh, we have made some mistakes. You've probably seen people talk about them on our Facebook group and stuff. And uh, yeah, obviously we take that really seriously. The team has done a lot to address a lot of those issues. We've also hired a lot of new people to obviously help with the production. Um, you know, for example, some people have been getting two lefts or two rights of the y-axis, which obviously sucks. Yeah, we've done more to label them. Uh, all the boxes have like more packing lists inside. The marketing team who also does a lot of the graphic design is also updating all of the labels and stuff like that. Now that this product has been on the market for just over a year now, it's like starting to get mature and we're ironing out all those issues. And so, yeah, there's been a lot of work done to resolve them, obviously because they're not just expensive for us to fix, but also sucks if you've been waiting a long time for the machine. So yeah, rest assured, we're working on that. Altmill 4x8 development has been moving quite well. Uh, we have built the first prototype version and we've done cuts on it and it works amazing. There's a couple things that we're doing to make sure that uh, it's ready for production. The main thing that we've been working on this month has been to understand the long-term wear effects of using the machine. One of the key components of the, the y-axis is the rack and pinion, and the rack and pinion can wear out over time. We need to understand how they wear, what the behavior of how they wear out, how quickly they wear out, what sort of maintenance do we need on them, what kind of materials should we use. Yeah, we've done a lot of testing, and we are continuing to do testing to see, to basically simulate, like, if you were to use this machine for a year or a couple of years, how would the machine behave over that period of time? We've also ordered a lot of like sample components to like test the hardness. We have a, we just got a hardness tester and we're also experimenting with um, material hardening processes like car carburization and, and nitriding. And we're working with some other manufacturers to like figure out that process as well. Yeah, I think the typical life of a pinion is about six months, but it, it is obviously possible to get it up a lot more and these where things happen gradually. So the precision of the machine will vary a little bit over time. And we kind of try to understand like what sort of impact does it really have? Most CNC machines we work in like sub hundreds or tenths of a millimeter or like tens of thousands of inches. And um, for woodworking especially, like that level of precision is not visible to the naked eye. There's also a matter of like what is a practical use of the machine because we've also seen a lot of people with bigger machines and they won't replace their uh, pinions because it doesn't really make a noticeable difference in the actual outcome of the product because you know we're talking about like thousands of an inch or less of change over the course of a year or several years even. Ben's also been putting out uh, videos with the marketing team on some of the development process of the 4x8. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, you know, that's a 
fun show to watch. If you want to see how uh, how we're doing things behind the scenes, that's a that's a good place to look. We also have ordered the another batch for prototyping um, for like full machines. I believe we're building three units. Two of them will go to beta testing. One of them will keep here, and that'll kind of do some more real life. Uh, use testing pretty soon. They should be here by the end of September, so we'll have full production quality ready machines in September or October. And we're still planning out the launch schedule for that. The chatter right now is probably mid to late October. Uh, so yeah, keep an eye out for those things as well. Next up, let's talk about the auto tool changer. Auto Tool Changer obviously been a feature that people have re been requesting for a long time. And we wanted to make sure we did it the best way possible. We made a lot of progress. I would say about 95% of the mechanical development has been complete. Uh, we have full like scale working uh, prototypes. I think we mentioned this prior, but we've done thousands of tool changes. We have some videos coming out to kind of show it being used in real life. Um, I believe there's like a aluminum project coming out and, and stuff like that. So the other part that's kind of important about the ATC stuff is the workflow. We have looked at a lot of uh, workflows for ATC and we're also, we're developing our own essentially to integrate with Gsender. Um, so what that means is like, if you need to select the tool, you need to set what tool you're using, the position of each thing and so on and so forth. We, you need a software interface for that. So Gsender team and the hardware team have both been working closely to make progress on that. We've had done some initial testing with the actual interface so far. That will go into the new version of Gerbil, uh, sorry, of Gsender, you know, uh, coinciding with the launch of the ATC. The other thing is we're also working on the tool rack system. Um, so that's the other part that's important about the whole uh, ATC ecosystem is like, how do we hold the tools and how many tools are we going to use and how do we program it and position it? Some of the cool things is um, they're working on making sure that like it can withstand crashes. So if you run the machine into the ATC, how will that behave? Dedusting, so dusting off tools before they get used so that they don't uh, jam up the spindle and also working on the tool length sensor. And so if you guys don't know, Gsender already has an integrated system to use tool, uh, tool length sensors. We don't offer one at the moment, uh, but it's relatively, you can buy quite a few different ones off the internet and you can set it up. It's pretty simple. Uh, but obviously if we're making tool length sensor for the ATC stuff, that can also be used for like any of the machines that use Gsender. The other thing that we're working on is the SD card support on the SLB. So if you guys don't know, the SLB fulfills the core functionality that we need, but we've developed it much more advanced to start adding the features in. So one of them being the SD card. So you can put a micro SD card into the uh, SLB, and then you can run like programs and macros from it. It's not, not fleshed out yet, but the functionality in the hardware exists. A big part of this is that uh, the tool information can be stored on the board itself which facilitates the uh, use of the ATC and probably will come with other features as well. So kind of like a free upgrade uh, if you already have an SLB. Next up, let's talk about the Autospin T1. Last month, I believe we talked about uh, the potential cabling of the auto spin uh, because we had some issues around the certification process. Essentially what had happened is for us to sell the product in North America, we want to uh, UL certify it, um, just like any other home appliance. But the manufacturer had only certified the body of the router and not the signal cable. And because the signal cable is a core component of the router, well, we can't really sell this unless the whole thing is certified. And so after some back and forth, we were able to figure out certifying the remainder part of the router. The goal is to finish that certification process in September, um, mid-September, and then production should be able to complete in about a couple weeks from there. So if everything goes smoothly, we should have the production units available for us to test around first week of October, and then uh, we'll set up this pre-sale or the, the, the sale system from there. I will say that there are some still 
challenges around the certification. We're still making good progress on that. Yeah, just keep uh, an eye on the news and we'll keep sharing stuff as we get to that. Um, the first batch will be about 2,000 units, so we're also planning to sort, sort of phase out the Makita as soon as we have the new routers and obviously make them available to customers who want to update their machines to the auto spin. The other big thing that's happened this month is the launch of our ER20 size spindles, and though that is for the 110 volt 1.5 kilowatt as well as the 220 volt 2.2 kilowatt spindles. Yes, you heard that right. We now have the 2.2 kilowatt spindles available. And so if you guys have kind of like been part of this journey, one of the main bottlenecks of alt mill performance has been how powerful the spindle is. It's actually been somewhat, not super well documented, but like mentioned a number of times uh, in the community where, you know, the machine is super strong, it can run really fast. The spindle just can't keep up with it. I will preface that like, the 1.5 kilowatt is probably more than powerful enough for the majority of users, but uh, people like their horsepower, right? So we got in the 2.2 kilowatt spindles uh, and we started shipping those. And so that's a option that's available to um, mostly to American customers. The other thing is that we're using, uh, we switch over the whole platform to ER20 size call it. A lot of people were saying they wanted to use the um, half inch half inch bits and so the ER20 collets are compatible with half inch bits. If you want to get um, the ER20 spindle but not the VFD because they come as a package, um, you can talk with the customer service team. I don't think we have the spindles available just as an individual purchase yet, but uh, you, that's something that we're working on depending on how our stock goes. The other big thing is, uh, as we mentioned in pre prior uh, updates, we were required to certify the VFDs that are gonna be sold to Canada. We're happy to announce that we've uh, certified the first batch, I think about 90 units. And we had some customers waiting on them to, uh, waiting on getting them. So those will be shipped. I believe they're shipping out already uh, to those Canadian customers. Canadian customers, they probably will see that they can't order uh, spindles directly from us at this moment on our website. We will pretty soon have the certified VFDs avail available for purchase on our store. And you can read the article about this uh, VFD on our blog. They are like very, very similar to the previous version um, internally. However, there's like a lot of kind of like assembly and quality life features like, um, like pluggable spindle cables and like a switch. It's a, there's a good chance that we'll phase out the old VFD versions into the new one and uh, everyone will be super happy and it'll be the greatest thing ever. Okay, so last thing I wanna talk about, we have an event part of Waterloo Tech Week happening September 11th at 6.30. It'll be basically a fireside chat. I'm gonna be the host, I'll be like, hey, I have two people that I know who are also in hardware and they'll be sharing their knowledge and expertise and we'll all be able to mingle and talk about hardware stuff. So if you're interested in entrepreneurship and whatnot uh, and you're in the Waterloo region, check out the event page. It's on the blog also. And that will be uh, hosted in our back warehouse area. So I think it'll be kind of cool to be, uh, I call the event between the racks. It's like between the ferns. I don't know if you guys get the reference. September is gonna be a really busy week, uh, sorry, a busy month because uh, we're prepping for a four by eight launch, prepping for the ATC launch, prepping for the enclosed VFDs with the certification. We'll also have a bunch of alt mill focused bits coming out and there's probably stuff that I'm missing. Things are busy, things are crazy. We are getting into our busy season, I seeing a little bit of an uptick on sales on a day-to-day -day basis. We'll probably see that trend happening as you go into September and people go back to school and uh, people are prepping for making stuff for Christmas. I think that's everything. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.